What's going on you guys? My name is Kirby Downey and welcome to this review. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the Voxelab Proxima Resin 3D printer. That one over there. If you guys haven't watched my unboxing video, um, there is a link below. Uh, check that out. That's where I unbox it and set it up uh, if you want to get an idea of what it's like to unbox this and set it all up. Um, it's actually really, really easy to get going. You know, once it's out of the box, you know, within 20 minutes, you are printing away. So this is my review of the Voxelab Proxima 3D printer. This was sent to me by Voxelab to review, but I am giving you my honest opinion on it. Um, I haven't been asked to say anything specific. So. so anyway, I have used an entire bottle of resin on this machine already. Um, and that's quite a lot. I've managed to print quite a few little models. You can see them all over here. I've also had quite a lot of fails. Well, not really quite a lot of fails, a few fails, but I'll get into those in a bit. So let me start off by my thoughts and opinions of this machine. Straight out of the box, it is easy to use. It's very quick to get set up. It's very easy to get going, which I found amazing. Before I actually even got this printer, I had little to no experience with resin 3D printers. The only bit of experience I've ever had is uh, using a, a, a form labs, a form two for about two hours. I had no clue what to expect. I had no clue how to set up a DLP machine or how to set up one of these types of machines. So I just went in there completely blind. The idea of going in there completely blind is to give an experience of someone who has never touched this kind of stuff. Uh, give them a sense of security, uh, just to give them an idea of what they're going to be getting themselves into. And also to see if this machine can be run by someone that doesn't really know much about the technology or the machine. And it turns out you can. Very easy to use, very easy to, to run, very easy to set up and very easy to print with. The actual UI on it is very, very easy to, um, to work with and, and follow that. The instructions, however, while they're good, if you can kind of work it out the the broken english in the instructions does make it a bit tricky but you know put one and two and two together you can kind of figure it out as you go now the the failures that i've had they had nothing to do with the actual machine they were not a fault of the machine they were me learning how to use the machine so my first failure was using a very very fine support with a very heavy model and it just basically pulled the supports off other failures were not leveling the bed properly and just not hollowing a model so that there's too much suction going on just very very noobish newcomer type of mistakes mistakes that anybody that has used one of these machines have made mistakes that teach you more about the machine so the biggest kind of drawback with a dlp or any kind of resin machine is that you don't know how your first layers are going Unlike with FDM, where you can watch your first layer, your first couple of layers being put down, it's pretty safe. With this one, you got to wait about an hour before you can actually start seeing it. However, I did find during your printing process, if you press pause, it will lift the bed up a little bit and you'll be able to see if there is any progress on it. Um, the problem about this is that it does leave a little line, as you can see in this little crystal. As the, the failure that I had was in my second print, I had to use the one filter that was given in the box. And the problem as well with this filter is that when you put this filter on the bottle, the perforation holes are wider than the bottle no, neck. So draining your vat is very, very tedious. You've got to do it very slowly. Um, so if like a funnel was included or if you purchase a funnel beforehand, um, you can do this. The other problem is once you've used that, that filter, you've used that filter and you're going to need more filters. 
you're going to need lots of filters at the end of this i will be going through a list of a couple of things that you may need to buy if, you, if you're looking to get one of these machines and you don't have any resin printers there's a list of things that you will have to get beforehand make sure you have it before you open up one of these machines and you'll have such an easier time along with that in the manual there was no real cleaning tips how to clean your vat how to deal with a fail all that stuff um but there is a lot of online information out there on YouTube and Facebook and that stuff. Um, none of them is about this machine specific, but there is other brands out there that use basically the exact same technology and everything is pretty much is pretty much the same. So you're able to learn how to, if you see how they're dealing with fails, how they are um, you know, cleaning their vats, you can use that. But overall, this is a fantastic machine. It's very well built. The only bit of plastic you can really see is your lid the body is is metal the z-axis frame is all metal everything is metal on this machine and that gives it that very high quality sturdy this ain't gonna break type of feel which i really like um for its price point being let's actually have an exact look at their website to make sure that i get it right as of making this video this machine is retailing for 230 dollars to about 200 45 dollars which is fantastic for a machine that body is metal everything feels high quality and a machine that prints straight out of the box now not every single one's going to print straight out of the box so uh you got to set your expectations there um but there is you in the box you do get a little letter to say here's an email address for support so if you do run into any issues you can use that email address there hey guys it's editing kirby i'm just breaking in here real quickly um number one i really need to learn how to frame my face and kind of stop getting out of frame <laughs> i really need to sort that out but um i just want to cut in here just to say that what i mean by not every single one isn't going to work straight out of the box is um i don't mean that this one was specifically cherry picked for me um, by that i mean it's like any piece of technology you know out of a thousand that are sold there may be one that might have a slight issue it's just it, it comes with every technology um if you're unlucky enough to get uh one that comes across a problem like that um get hold of the support team and i'm sure they'll be happy to help you out back to the review as of publishing this video this is a very very new machine there are not many out there right now um but I do believe this is going to be a very popular machine in the future. So for now, if you are jumping, if you are looking to buy one of these machines, just know that there isn't that much information about it available online. But I do plan on making a bunch of videos around this machine and how to work it um, and how to do certain things such as changing your FEP sheet, how you drain your resin, how to deal with a failure um, and other things. One of the, I've already made a video on how to create your own UV curing box. Check that video out as well so you're new to resin printing and you don't know what the deal is here is a list of things that you need to have before starting this hobby you'll need to make sure you got your resin ready these machines do not ship with resin unlike fdm which ship with a bit of uh, filament they do not ship with resin you're going to need ipa and you're going to need a lot of it you use your ipa to wash your models and to clean everything down ipa dissolves the resin you're going to need washing containers get like little old plastic lunch boxes type of thing cheap ones those are perfect those can store your ipa and you can wash in there close them up give them a shake and you'll be able to wash your models like that get yourselves some gloves you do not want to get this res resin on you you don't want to get it in your mouth in your eyes on your hands or anything like that if you do get it on your hands it's not the end of the world you wash it off immediately um, it's not going to burn a hole through your hand but people do have allergic reactions to this resin and it can be quite an irritant to the skin. Get yourself a mask as well. Having a mask is going to help you out with ventilation, especially if you're working in a very enclosed space like I have to in my outdoor shed. Um, this really helps out with the fumes, mostly with the IPA. Get yourself some paper towels and some tissues. Use this to like lay down where you're working and use it to wipe off any IPA and you use it to help cleaning, clean your vat and your machine microfiber cloths are just as good and maybe even better because those won't scratch your fep sheet get yourself some spare fep sheets there's loads of tutorials on how to replace your fep sheet but you can literally tear your fep sheet 
installing this um, not because there's anything wrong but it's very very fragile and you do not want to tear your FEP sheet and you do not want to damage it the FEP sheet is what keeps the resin from the LCD screen and if that stuff spills it's a very very big cleanup job luckily I haven't had that I do wish that Voxelab shipped one or two FEP sheets in that box as well like I said, you can tear your FEP on your first print. My second ever print had a failure and I was worried I was going to tear it by having to peel that bit of resin that was stuck to the FEP sheet and I had to kind of like prize it out and I was extremely worried I was going to damage my FEP sheet. I've also made a few little templates for this machine. There's a couple of little doohickeys and things that I want to make that will help things much easier. For example, the only place that I can store the bed without it touching anything is back on the machine so i want to create a little stand for that so when i take it out i can put it on there i also want to create like a drip uh, an angle drip tray and i want to create a stand for the a, a little stand for the vat so that when you put it down you're not resting it directly on the fep sheet like i've just explained is so fragile if you just have a stand where that isn't touching anything that will be perfect so i'm going to be making all of those in the future as well look out for those another thing that you're going to need is a uv cure box i've made a video on how to make your own uv cure box but you can also buy them as well a uv cure box is very important because it is the final stage of the resin cure process it basically just anneals the resin and just hardens the rest of the resin that's still there and makes it just a little bit more harder and sturdier you can even cure your models in the sun but be very careful of this because you're basically putting in a direct sunlight and heat and what does plastic do when it gets heated and melts best solution for this is put it in a tub of water and that will magnify and keep it cool as well so my final views of this machine it is excellent it is a great resin printer it's perfect for you to get started the one thing i really like about fox lab with this printer is they are not trying to reinvent the wheel they're not trying to overcomplicate anything it works pretty much exactly the same as all the competitors it uses the same slicer and it uses the same methodology of printing the main difference is that it's a monochrome lcd screen which means that it can print a lot faster for its price it's good value for money and it gets the job done. If you are interested in getting into resin 3D printing, this is the perfect machine for you. And it's a gateway to a whole new world of 3D printing that just blows my mind still. So if you're interested in getting one of these, there are links down below. Go check them out. They're available on Amazon as well. Next day delivery, which is fantastic. You can also use any standard photopolymer resin as long as it uses the wavelength 405 NM. I don't know what that NM stands for. Which is also good as there's no you're not locked into just their resin you can use any resin you like the resin that i used for all of these models were just a standard ones that i bought off amazon i do have the voxelab branded resin but i've got a whole nother review just for those if you're interested in getting into resin 3d printing please leave a comment down below if you've got one of these machines or looking to get one of these machines please ask me any questions you like I'll be happy to fire them away. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next video. I've got lots of plans. Bye. Yeah, yo. Yeah, thanks.